Hi there, uh, it's me Bijoy Thomas again. Welcome back to my channel 5 Minutes Neuro Emerging with uh, Bijoy Thomas. Thank you very much uh, for your overwhelming response, comments, likes and subscriptions. Last week we discussed about the mid-sagittal anatomy of the cerebellum and the brainstem and we tried to explain how you can differentiate between cerebellar vermin atrophy versus uh, hyperplasia. I showed you an example of a case where the inferior vermin hyperplasia coexisted with the superior vermin atrophy and uh, I got a message from Dr. Sneha Valsa Sudhagar, a pediatric neuroradiologist from the Great Ormond Street Hospital in the UK telling that this may not be always true. She sent me a case uh, of a follow-up case, I believe that is uh, a case of INAD infantile neuroaxonal dystrophy, you can see that the uh, cerebellar worm is atrophic and you can see the clavum is uh, enlarged, the clavum is a tubercle at the posterior margin of the uh, medulla uh, where the gracile tubercle, uh, gracile nucleus is uh, uh, underneath and uh, clavum in uh, Latin means uh, club and uh, in infantile neuroaxonal dystrophy there will be progressive uh, atrophy of the cerebellar vermis and, and the clavial uh, hypertrophy and so and she says that uh, when there is atrophy the vertical height of this cerebellar vermis also comes down so we cannot simultaneously comment that there is hyperplasia of the vermis. Again I went back and actually looked at a case uh, they, which was sent to me by uh, Dr. Jitendra Saini from Nimans Bangalore some time back and this is a known case of a P-line mutation in infantile neuroaxonal dystrophy. There is significant worm in atrophy along with the clavial hypertrophy and uh, uh, you can see that the vertical height of the worm is also come down and the lower margin of the worm is well above the apex and uh, there is a significant atrophy when the when the cerebellar atrophy uh, comes uh, there can be a superior inferior shrinkage of the vermis as well so it is difficult to comment on a simultaneous hyperplasia especially when the inferior vermin folia are also prominent thank you snia for that uh, comment and uh, the correction and i looked at again uh, my case uh, which shows that there is inferior vermin uh, folia are not that prominent so when you see this pattern will you tell that there is hyperplasia plus atrophy or is it just atrophy it is difficult and if you have comments uh, please comment in the box below. Others have asked for a embryological basis of uh, diseases of the hindbrain today so we will discuss some embryology of the posterior fossa. Embryology may not be very interesting to read but if you can actually predict pathology based on embryology then it becomes uh, interesting. For example, in this case of medulloblastoma, different subtypes like the wind or the sonic hedgehog, based on embryological anatomy, you can actually predict the location as is shown in by this uh, heat maps uh, published in American Journal of Neuroradiology in 2014. You can, based on location, you can actually predict uh, uh, the subtypes of medulloblastoma and it has got an embryological basis. Another interesting example to learn embryology through pathology is Lermit Leuclos syndrome or dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma where you can see this tiger striped appearance when the Purkinje fiber layer is absent in the cerebellum and uh, you see a lot of abnormalities out there and although people have not completely understood the pathophysiology or pathology development or when you want to understand why there is a loss of cleavage or elongation of the medulla compared to pons in this case along with uh, cerebellar hyperplasia and why there are multiple small cysts in the cerebellum along with the uh, cobblestone lysencephaly in a case of uh, tubulinopathy, tube A1A mutation. It also has got an embryological basis. If you wish to know all these things, stay tuned for my next episode which is coming soon. And I'm happy to announce that after we have learned these things, Dr. Snia will come back with some interesting cases in order to reinforce our studies on embryology of the hindbrain. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you like this and if you wish to see future videos, please subscribe. Thank you very much.